Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alkene structure, classification, and stability. To understand elimination reactions, we really need to understand the CC double bond. Here's a top view of an alkene. The double bond of the carbon-carbon double bond is represented by the blue bonds shown here. Each alkene carbon is sp2 hybridized and the geometry is trigonal planar. This leads to a flat geometry with 120 degree bond angles. From this perspective, the alkene lies in the plane of the screen and there's a top face which is above and a lower face which is below. This picture shows a side perspective of the alkene with orbitals to indicate the geometry and the bonding in the molecule. The sp2 hybridized lobes of each carbon are shown in blue, while the unhybridized p orbitals are shown in green. The CC bond is actually two bonds in one. It consists of one sigma bond and one pi bond. The sigma bond is formed by overlapping sp2 orbitals, as is shown here, while the pi bond is formed by overlapping p orbitals, which is shown here. Each lobe of the p's overlapping in the top and bottom planes represents a half of a pi bond. Here's a little more about the CC double bond. It consists of a sigma bond, which has an average bond strength of about 368 kilojoules per mole. Then there's the pi bond, which has an average bond strength of about 267 kilojoules per mole. The sigma bond is stronger, while the pi bond is weaker. The sum of the two then make up the bond association energy of the total carbon-carbon double bond, which is about 635 kilojoules per mole. The pi bond of the CC bond is rigid. It doesn't allow for rotation. In order to rotate about an alkene, you'd have to break the pi bond and that costs quite a bit of energy. So rotation about CC double bonds is restricted. This can lead to stereoisomerism in alkenes. In other words, some alkenes can exist as stereoisomers. Here's an example. 2-methylbutene has two possible structures and they're called cis and trans. This is what they look like. This is a cis version of 2-methylbutene and if you imagine a line bisecting the CC double bond lengthwise, the two methyl groups are on the same side of that line. That's called cis. The other possibility though is that the alkene might have the methyl groups on opposite sides of that line. This is called trans. These molecules are inequivalent because it's not possible to rotate about the CC double bond to make one into the other. These are a pair of stereoisomers, and this is an alkene that exhibits stereoisomerism. This slide delves into that question of stereoisomerism a little bit deeper. Imagine an alkene that has R groups labeled R1, R2, R3, and R4. Stereoisomers exist for this alkene when R1 does not equal R2 and R3 does not equal R4. In other words, when the groups on the left carbon are different, when R1 is different from R2, and the groups on the right carbon are different, R3 and R4 aren't the same, then stereoisomers are possible. Here's an example. In this alkene from the previous slide, on the left carbon, there's a methyl group and a hydrogen, which are not the same as each other. And then on the right carbon, there's a methyl group and a hydrogen, which are different from each other. Therefore, this alkene fits the model for having a stereoisomer. So a stereoisomer for this molecule exists. Now, if you want to get the stereoisomer for an alkene, all you need to do is flip the groups on any one carbon to generate its stereoisomer. And in this case, I'm going to show flipping the right two substituents. So hydrogen will take methyl's place and methyl will take hydrogen's place. When that's done, that generates the stereoisomer, which is shown here. And this is the situation where the cis molecule and the trans molecule are stereoisomers. Here's an example with a tri-substituted alkene. These are sometimes a little more difficult for people. But if you take a look at the left carbon, just ask yourself, is this R group and that R group different? And they are. And then check the other carbon, the right carbon, and ask yourself, is this group and that group different? And if they are, then this molecule would have stereoisomers, and it does. Again, to find the stereoisomer of this molecule, you can just flip any two groups. And again, I'm going to flip the groups on the right carbon. That's just arbitrary and a matter of perspective. If you wanted to flip the groups on the left carbon, you certainly could, and you get the same result. This is the stereoisomer of that molecule. Here's another example with a tri-substituted alkene. Check the left carbon. Here, there's a methyl group and a methyl group, so these two groups are the same, so this doesn't fit the pattern. Although the right carbon has two different groups, the left carbon has two groups that are the same. So this is a molecule that won't have stereoisomers. Alkene classification and stability is based on substitution. Alkenes are classified by how many carbon groups are attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. 
The first type of alkene that we'll look at is ethylene. Ethylene is the simplest alkene. The carbon-carbon double bond only has hydrogens attached. There are no carbon groups attached to the double bond. When one carbon group is attached to the CC double bond, this is called a monosubstituted alkene, and in this case there's one R group, which I'll represent with a blue circle. Disubstituted alkenes have several different configurations. We're just going to look at two, the cis version and a trans version of the molecule, which we've discussed before, have R groups but on opposite sides of the double bond. Then there's trisubstituted alkenes, which contain three carbon groups. And finally, the most highly substituted alkenes are tetrasubstituted, and in these cases, the carbon-carbon double bond has four carbon groups attached. Less substituted to more substituted is the way they're arranged on this slide. And it turns out that each R group contributes a little bit of electron density to the carbon-carbon double bond to stabilize it. That's going to be shown here with some red arrows to indicate how each one of the R groups donates a bit of electron density. Over here in the mono substituted, you can see there's a little bit of donation into the carbon-carbon double bond, which helps make it a little bit more stable, whereas the disubstituteds have two groups. So disubstituted is slightly more stable than mono substituted due to this extra electron donation. Trisubstituteds take it a step further with three donating groups, and tetrasubstituted have the most stability because they have four carbon groups stabilizing the double bond. That makes less substituted alkenes less stable and more substituted alkenes more stable. The order of stability trends with substitution. Steric strain also affects alkene stability. And for alkenes with the same degree of substitution, the alkene with less steric strain is more stable. Here's an example comparing the cis and the trans alkenes. First, I'm going to try to indicate the relative sizes of the groups with these blue circles. Hydrogen is a very small atom. It takes up very little space, whereas a methyl group is quite a bit larger, indicated by the larger circle. If you consider the cis molecule and then compare it to the trans molecule and look at the interactions between the big groups, you can get a sense of which one is going to have more steric strain. In the upper cis molecule, there's steric strain developing between the two methyl groups. This steric strain leads to some instability in the cis relative to the trans. So the cis molecule is less stable and the trans is more stable. If we consider another example with a trisubstituted alkene, here's one stereoisomer and here's another. In the upper example, the sizes of the groups are indicated with the blue spheres again, where hydrogen is small, the methyl group is medium sized, and the ethyl group is the larger of the two groups. In the lower example, the same groups are present but in different spots. In the lower structure, there's some steric strain developing between two methyl groups, but when you compare that to the upper structure, there's steric strain developing between a methyl group and a larger ethyl group, and that leads to a bigger steric strain interaction. So there's more strain in the upper structure and less strain in the lower structure. That leads to a less stable molecule on the top and a more stable molecule on the bottom. With this logic then you can sort out which alkenes will be more or less stable even when they have the same degree of substitution. If you found this video useful check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.